All right, so we're here in San Diego at the IMSH 2016 conference, probably the biggest uh, conference in the world for the simulation community. I'm very excited to be here and working with our great partners at Lairdahl Medical. We're very happy to be involved in this collaboration with them because we really share the same mission, which is ultimately to save lives, uh, we hope through improving uh, training for healthcare professionals. I'm going to be introducing Harvey, the cardiopulmonary patient simulator. It's the longest standing of the computer enhanced type of mannequins in all of health professions education. It's invented by Dr. Michael Gordon almost 50 years ago um, to help fill the need for improved training and a very fundamental clinical skill. And so we're going to be uh, taking center stage at the Lairdahl booth uh, to highlight some of the features of the next generation Harvey. A lot of people think about the cardiac exam as all about listening with the stethoscope and the heart sounds and lung sounds, but actually Harvey can simulate much more than that. At the touch of a button, Harvey can now simulate 50 different patient scenarios, patient cases. Formerly, he could do 30. So we've almost doubled, a uh, very substantial increase in the number of conditions that Harvey can simulate. And I'll talk a little bit later about what the 20 new cases feature. But all of them include not just heart and lung sounds, but some of the non-auscultatory findings, some of the things that you can feel or see uh, in your physical examination. These include things like the arterial pulses. All right, so Hector now has a cotton swab. Since you all can't come up and put your hands on the various pulses to feel them, we are showing here on the screen behind his head a little cotton swab is placed on the carotid, and there you can see a nice, normal carotid pulse. Lots of mannequins have those. What's different about Harvey is that these can change in subtle ways depending on the condition that he's simulating. So whereas in some other simulators, the focus might be on, is there a pulse or not? Do I have to perform CPR or resuscitate this patient? In Harvey, he's always alive, and we want to try to detect these findings to make a diagnosis. So if I change to another condition, I think you'll see, there we go. You notice a change in that? Now instead of it being a single little pulse, now it's a double one. There's a fancy Latin name for that, not so important. But that doesn't happen in many conditions. So if you actually take the time to feel the carotid and pick up that double pulse, you already are a long way toward making the correct diagnosis. Harvey has bilateral carotid pulses. He has bilateral brachial, radial, and femoral artery pulses. To highlight, that's one of the differences. The old Harvey didn't have any pulses in this arm. Typically, traditionally, we examine from the right side of the patient, so we only had a brachial artery pulse in the right arm. Now we have brachial and radial pulses in both upper extremities. Can you see just above the V in the neck there? Thank you, Hector, for indicating. See the little pulsation there? That's the jugular venous. And you can actually see maybe there's even two little waveforms there. Depending on the condition, we can change those. That never makes a difference in the middle of a code, blue, resuscitation type of a scenario. That's why most other mannequins don't even have the inclusion of the jugular pulses. But in Harvey, that's a very important, subtle, finding. Harvey also has chest wall movements. A lot of you are probably aware that you have a beat of your heart. You can feel it against your chest. Hector will demonstrate that. Again, you can see the movement of the cotton swab there, where he has his finger on what we call the apex beat. Number one. If I give a different disease, now you notice it's triple. Pa, pa, pa. Pa, pa, pa. Ba, ba, ba. That's nicknamed the triple ripple. That happens in one disease. That gives away the diagnosis. Something called hypertrophic cardiomyopathy. It's relatively common and is the most common cause of sudden death in young athletes. When you hear about a young athlete that collapses suddenly, it's probably from this condition. If they pick up that abnormality, that could save someone's life. There are other areas where you can have movements in the chest wall. For example, if a heart has a valve, leaky valve problem, too much blood in the ventricle over time, it dilates. Then you can see 
that the movement is no longer here, but way out here. You can just see the cotton swab and thing, but I think you can see where Hector has his hand. Way out here is where he feels the beat of the heart. Just trying to give you a little flavor for some of the variety. Again, where is that apex beat in the middle of a code? They don't even have a pulse, so that's not important. But in Harvey, for bedside examination skills, that's an important finding, and Harvey has this whole range. Hector had two swabs, one on the carotid and one on the chest wall movements. That's because all of these pulses are synchronized. That's how you can time various things. And when we go to listen for heart sounds, it's also important that they're synchronized with the pulse. It's the only way you know, for example, if a murmur is a systolic murmur or a diastolic murmur. So now we'll go to listening. Some of the various heart sounds. The normal heart sounds, these vary depending where you move your stethoscope across the chest appropriately. They are timed with the carotid pulse. Let's play a murmur. And you hear not only the drum beat of the first and second heart sound, but the whooshing sound of the murmur. This is aortic stenosis. For those of you with a clinical background and know a little bit about that, that's a partially stuck shut aortic valve. Sometimes you can even hear that up into the neck. Harvey's murmurs radiate as you would expect them to. In fact, you can see he's moving that stethoscope up into the carotid artery and the murmur radiates appropriately there. Let's do number four, TR. Harvey is also breathing. If I show his abdomen here, this is a little bit subtle. Hopefully from where you're standing you can see the movement of the wallet up and down. If you listen carefully to this murmur, softer, louder, softer, louder. So the heart sounds are synchronized with the respiratory cycle because sometimes the heart sounds change whether you're breathing in or breathing out. So all of this level of subtlety is possible in Harvey. So I think those were just a taste of some of the features. I mentioned at the outset that Harvey can now simulate 50 different conditions. You notice the ones that we were just playing there are at 60 beats a minute. Relatively slow, nice and steady. We chose that heart rate for pedagogical reasons because it's easier for especially novice learners to master the pattern recognition of these sounds when it's nice and slow. Ten of the new cases, though, that we've just introduced with this generation of Harvey include the heart sounds at faster heart rates, heart rate of 90. This would be appropriate if you were with more advanced learners, like residents, for example, or advanced nurse practitioners. Also can be quite useful in testing situations, especially if you're trying to capture those who have mastered this with a higher degree of difficulty. We can play one of these conditions. So here's just the normal heart tones, first and second heart sound, but a little bit faster. As you might imagine, timing things like when does a murmur occur, when it's just this little bit faster, is another level of difficulty. The other 10 new cases in Harvey are completely new. They're at heart rates of 60, but we wanted to give additional variations on common conditions. So Harvey has always had a cardiomyopathy program, that's a damaged heart muscle. It was a pretty extreme case, a lot of findings. What we're now offering among the new cases are several milder versions, systolic heart failure, diastolic heart failure, the heart failure that happens with coronary artery disease. We've given additional variants of some of the more common murmurs, like aortic stenosis, like mitral regurgitation. So 20 new patient cases are included in this generation of Harvey. What else? We've also packaged 10 of them to be complete standardized patient cases that you could use for hybrid simulation. What we do in our end of year OSCE for our third year medical students is we have an after, 
who's sitting right at the head of Harvey, and it's a hybrid simulation. They get the history and demonstrate their interpersonal skills with the live human, leveraging the advantages of that form of simulation. But because the actor, if he doesn't happen to have a murmur or distended neck veins, he can't fake those things. When it comes time to do the physical exam, we say, this is the same patient, and they perform their examination on Harvey, this time with pathologic findings that go with that case. So what's included in these SP, or standardized patient packages, are the scripts for the actors, for the history that they give, checklists for the history, for the physical examination, an evaluation form that the standardized patient fills out of the learner about their interpersonal skills, as well as evaluation forms for the faculty to rate the SP on how well they are performing their role. So a complete package would be very useful for those places that do, for example, OSCEs, a form of assessment uh, for their learners. I know this is being done widely, both in medicine and in nursing. Other things that are new features of the next generation Harvey is additional support, both for the teachers and the operators of the mannequin. One of Harvey's claims to fame is its ease of use. It truly is plug and play. Um, many of our teaching sessions using Harvey at our school are done without a faculty there. That's because Harvey comes with a complete curriculum, another major distinguishing factor. We have a full set of teaching slides that come for all of the conditions that Harvey can simulate. In addition, we have fleshed some of those out in multimedia format, now available in a web version. We call this UMedic. The UM stands for the University of Miami. And we have e-learning programs that are web accessible so the students can review this material at home. And when they are in school and have the mannequin available, they do hands-on, but they don't need me there to teach them. They have little videos with Dr. Gordon, who is their little professor in a box, if you will, um, that they can learn the lessons from. An advantage of using e-learning as well is they can replay those as many times as they want. Sometimes they're afraid to ask questions when it's a live instruction, and if it goes by without the opportunity to answer a question, then that's lost. With these, there are self-assessment questions built in. All of the answers are explained, they get immediate feedback, and they can work at their own pace. So the UMedic e-learning programs are an additional learning resource that can be used with Harvey or as a standalone. But if you just get the mannequin, you also get the complete curriculum that will be loaded on a laptop that comes with the simulator. Lastly, to help those institutions that maybe already have a Harvey, um, but faculty or technical staff have trained, we are planning to do an ongoing series of webinars, both for the teachers, how to teach with Harvey, um, sharing tips. We will do this in a live uh, webinar format for those who are able to join, and then there will be the opportunity to ask questions share experiences across Harvey learners, and these will be recorded for asynchronous uh, viewing um, if that's more convenient. We will also have some of these webinars which are focused more on the technical operation and maintenance of the simulator for those who fill that role at a simulation or a clinical skills center. For those of you who already have a Harvey and are really interested to get some of these new features, Actually, there are various options for trading in um, and upgrading your Harvey unit. You can also get information on our website. That's GCRME, that stands for Gordon Center for Research and Medical Education, .miami.edu. You can also ask any of your friendly neighborhood Lairdall representatives who are well-versed uh, with all of the University of Miami educational systems and would be happy to assist you.